You are listening to I Am Refocused Radio with your host, Shamaya Reed. This show is designed to inspire you to live your purpose and regain your focus. And now, here's your host, Shamaya Reed. Hey, welcome to I Am Refocused Radio. We are here once again, and today we have an honor talking to a music artist, Noma. She is a singer, songwriter, and she is also rolling a talk to us today about her music career, some recent projects that she dropped. She's based out of Atlanta. And I just want to say first, welcome to the show. How are you doing? Hey, thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here. Thanks for having me. So you as a singer, songwriter, um, how did you get started? And tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, I have been, I kind of put it like this, like I've been a, a musician in hiding a little bit my whole life, <laughs> you know, I've been singing and in choirs and in church band and stuff like that since I was a kid. And I was just always obsessed with singing and melodies and, I, you know, writing poems and writing songs and, um, you know, like, like, I just didn't have any um, confidence for the longest time. You know, I was just too insecure to really try anything. (laughs) Um, if I'm being real, real. Um, so yeah, so I think kind of the focus, I mean, talk about being focused, um, that COVID gave the world when you just have no, nowhere to go and no place to be and, you know, no one to like hang out with in person. And, um, it really got me started, and gave me enough time to, um, start writing. And I got plugged into a a class here and there. I started learning about, um, music production and, you know, getting, um, sort of my home studio set up. And I know there are so many stories like this. I mean, so many people have done the same thing over the last, you know, year and a half, two years now. Um, so yeah, that's my story. It was like a little bit of a late start and, but it's funny, most of it had to be, like my mindset before I could really try to get going in the music industry. It had everything to do with me being in my own way and not even attempting to have a career in the music industry or try to be a singer songwriter or release music. Um, So yeah, this is me trying now and showing up and trying to make my dreams happen. And it's been a really, really wild year of just working nonstop and collaborating with producers and, um, releasing a little bit of what I have sort of sitting on my computer along the way. Um, but it's been, I've learned a lot and I really, really love that this is what I'm doing now. And you mentioned that you are based in Atlanta. So what is Atlanta like? What is the scene like for you? And was that the very place that you launched your music career? Yeah, well, um, I'm in the suburbs of Atlanta. I, um, you know, I, I have a family, so I really am just, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm home, um, a lot. And so it hasn't felt like it matters <laughs> much where I'm based. Cause I just have, you know, like everyone, there's no, no shows, no, you know, now it's starting to open up a bit in performance, but, um, yeah, I've really just been keeping my head sort of down and just writing a ton and recording a ton and learning about, production and collaboration and pitching music for sync and things like that. And so, um, it hasn't felt like, I mean, like that Atlanta has been a big part of my story. However, I'm sure like growing up here more than I realize, I'm sure it is a part of my story because, um, in the few times I've moved away from here, I, you know, I think I took for granted what, a great music and art scene Atlanta has. I didn't even realize it until I was gone. And I was like, wow, like not everyone has this. Um, So I'm sure it affects me bigger than, you know, more than I know, just all the different influences in in the city and all the different talent. Um, But yeah, in in terms of like my day to day working, um, I'm not out in the city too much. (laughs) And when it comes to music, well, some of the latest projects that you release, you have a few, uh, I would say, from 2021. And when I say a few, I'm just playing. You have a lot of music uh, that you released in 2021. The most recent was uh, My Own Way. But tell us a little bit about some of the things you've been working on. Yeah, it's been kind of an experimental year. Um, 
and which has been really, really fun. I've been able to see, um, you know, I'll do a song and I'll release it and I'll like it. And maybe I want to do one like that again, or maybe I'm kind of like, Oh, that was cool while it lasted, but I'm ready to kind of hear a new sound. And so it's just been kind of throwing all the spaghetti at the walls (laughs) and, um, yeah, everyone I've been working with this year, I just, they've become my dearest, my closest friends. Um, and so, yeah, I think what it's, I think I have seven or eight songs. I can't even keep up. (laughs) Um, I think I have like about 40 songs done on my computer. Not all of them are great and releasable. Um, but it's been really, really busy. So I'm not really keeping up with, um, I'm like, I'm not counting (laughs) how much I'm releasing. It's just what feels right. It's like, okay, it's been a minute. Let's get this next one out. And it sort of is becoming a little bit of a music machine over here, but I love it. I'm actually, that's my publishing company. It's called Melody um, Machine because it just keeps, we just keep going. So, um, but yeah, we did My Own Way recently. Uh, It's kind of an electronic um, indie pop thing. Um, I feel like that actually going back to the Atlanta thing, that's kind of the sort of the indie music scene here is really rich and there's just so much to choose from and lots of like great bands passing through Atlanta while I was growing up and I was going to shows and going to see everybody. Um, So I feel like I'm in this pop space, but a little, I want like a little bit of weird to get in there, if that makes sense. (laughs) Like I want a little bit of quirkiness in everything. Um, so I just, I feel like that really came through in my own way. Like we love that song. I'm really proud of it. We've really poured ourselves into it. I love the message of it. I mean, I'm trying to empower people to just stop comparing yourself to everyone around you and just do what, you know, what's in front of you, not looking to the left and the right, but just like taking that step forward. Um, that's sort of my heart behind the song. So I'm like, I'm excited about that one. Yeah. Once again, talking to Nomai here on I Am Refocus Radio, you mentioned confidence. How important is that as an artist? Because you also mentioned you have a, a publishing company. How does that make an impact as far as you as an individual to just go after what you're trying to do? Yeah, I mean, com- I mean, not like I'm a confidence expert by any means, because I always have, you know, like anyone, we have down days where we just uh, are wondering, like, if it, is it all worth it? Is what I'm doing? Is it going to pay off? And um, and that's a weird thing to even talk about, too. Like, what does success even look like? And I feel like I've landed on it looks like I enjoy the process, you know, because I really do love the songwriting process. I love coming up with new melodies and new lyrics and just and even like sending stems back and forth to producers and like recording in my house. Like I love every part of it. Um, So I think if I am working myself a little too hard and I get tired, some of those like doubt, some of the doubts start to creep in. So in order to make this like a sustainable career, I, you know, I feel like my default has become over the years is like, I am confident in what I'm doing. I am confident in the music I'm making. I love what I'm doing. So I just need to be, um, I suppose, bold enough to let people see that confidence. I feel like I've trained myself over the years to be like meek and humble and a nice person because those are all good things, of course. Um, But I'm really, really good at minimizing myself. I'm really good at um, just diminishing my accomplishments Um, when at the end of the day, you know, the truth is, and I need to sort of say it out loud sometimes, like I work my butt off (laughs) and I make great music and I like, can't wait for people to hear it. I want people to hear it. Um, but unless I'm really owning the process and owning that confidence, um, you know, it's kind of like when you apologize for people to, you know, when you're just trying to show them something like they're not going to be interested. You know, you have to show people your own enthusiasm about what you're doing. And if you're not enthusiastic about it, why are they going to be, you know? So, um, yeah, it's just been a lot of learning on how to sort of stay there, like live in that confident place and keep my mindset there. Um, and most of the time it has to do with how, how much I'm sleeping and all of those things. (laughs) And you as a entrepreneur slash full-time music creative, you're in the game. You're not doing this part-time. You have media. 
talking about you. You have blogs talking about you. You have all this sinking and stuff with TV and stuff happening. I mean, how does that feel to be able to see that come into reality versus once upon a time, it was just an idea? Yeah. Oh, man, what a good question. I actually feel like um, I don't really camp out on that too much. I'm so, and I probably should. You're, I lo- even the question is like, man, that's a, <laughs> I need to think about that more often. <laughs> um, because I do tend to think I'm very future focused and I'm always thinking about what's next and I'm always moving on to the next project, the next song, what's going, you know, I'm just, I want to use the momentum to drive the future. Um, so I don't often look back and celebrate the little wins and the successes, but, um, yeah, it feels it actually like a dream because I'm telling you, I'm like three, four, three years ago, maybe my own sister didn't know that I wanted to be a singer songwriter. Like I remember like kind of confessing it to her in tears <laughs> being like, I, I don't, I, it's so silly to say it out loud. I was just so afraid of it, but I want to be a singer. I've always been obsessed my whole life. And and she had no idea. She's like, oh, like I knew you sang, but really, you know? <laughs> so that just shows you just how much fear I had worked up in my own head. And I was really just unwilling to give it a shot. Um, and I mean, it's kind of scary. Like you're putting yourself out there, you're putting your art and your work out there and you're showing people, um, Hey, this is what it looks like when I try, this is me trying. And you know, what if it fails, then it's like, everyone saw you fail. <laughs> But all of that isn't as, um, I just don't care. Like, I don't care about that as much as I care, care about what if I'm, you know, 85 and I never tried. That's, you know, so just don't waste time. Go do the thing. <laughs> and you being part of the club of being an expert, because you are an expert, because some people try and then some people do after they try. Because try is just another word another way of just saying I might do it but when you do it though that's a totally different ball game so you being an inspiration to a lot of people out there especially indie artists what's some of the things you learned along the way from the business part of being in the music industry because that's tough how have you survived so far Um, yeah, it, I I think I just have to have, like I was saying before, like an, um, an, you know, relentless level of enthusiasm and determination for what I'm doing. And, um, and sort of, I'm that kind of person who like, won't read instructions. I'll just sort of like, if it's on the computer, I'll just keep clicking until I figure it out. (laughs) Or if I'm putting together furniture or something, I'll just like keep messing with stuff till I figure it out. Um, So I feel like that's how I've approached sort of the music business thing. Like I just keep researching and I keep clicking the next, oh, I've I've never heard, you know, why does somebody need a publishing company if you, you know, like, and what does that even mean? And who, and I don't know all the ins and outs of like all the different royalty types and all the different ways you can collect those pennies and all that's, you know, it's kind of going down a rabbit hole, but um Yeah. Like I said, some of the classes I jumped into during um, lockdown were critical because I had no practical steps forward. I didn't know how to set up my business as, um, you know, how does a musician even set up a business? Like, what does that even mean? And so um, I I do feel passionate about like everyone needs to know this. (laughs) Like if this is if you're serious about doing music you know you've got to learn the business side and you've got to know how to read basic legal you know conversations and that kind of thing and and contracts and um you just got to keep asking questions and i think the people who are really really determined to succeed um you know the business side shouldn't be scary and it shouldn't be something to to like stop your progress because you just need to be obsessed enough to keep asking those questions and keep learning. Um, I feel like, you know, that, what do people say? Forever learners. Like if you're just a forever learner, um, just keep asking questions and keep searching for the answer. I mean, DM me, I don't know. (laughs) And once again, talk to know my, I will ask you this. How do you keep it lighthearted? as far as making this your career? 
because it's one thing to have passion for it, but how do you keep it fun personally? Um, I, I, I naturally am just go, 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 go. And because it's a creative endeavor, I, you can, you could work all day, you know? I mean, there's so many jokes out there about like, when is the mix finished? When is it a final product? You know, it's like you could continuously tweak the music and, you know, and how do you even know when something's ready to be released? Like I listened to some of my very first releases and I already am like, oh, I'm like, Nine months later, I'm thinking, oh, I I would tweak this and I would change this. And so I'm just trying not to be too precious or too. That's what has kept me back for so many years is I didn't want to try to do anything because I didn't want to fail. I didn't want to mess up. And so when I decided to just, you know, give myself the permission to I'm going to try and I'm going to fail, I'm going to mess up and the mix isn't going to be great at the beginning (laughs) Um, because it's a process and a journey for everyone. And no one wakes up on day one being a raving success. And so um, I think if I, I've sort of decided, like, this is where I'm putting my, my stand on this mentality and this mindset of, I'm just going to be that person who doesn't quit. And, but that only works if I am getting rest and I am getting exercise and I am hanging out with my kids and I'm also letting myself have a life. Because if I don't have a life, I'm going to burn out really, really quick. And it won't be 20 years of music from No My. It'll be 20 minutes. You know, I'm just going to burn out. So um, I feel like that's the phase I'm in now. I've been going pretty hard. And now I'm learning how to say no to some things and um, just figuring out what to prioritize and that kind of thing. Once again, talking to No My here on I'm Refocus Radio. You as a woman in the industry, are there other women that you surround yourself with in the industry or that you look up to? Yes. Um, I don't have like famous names for you really, but I, a lot of the people I work with are women and we all um, feel extra, what's the word? Just it's like an extra, I don't know, knowing there of like, I see you, I see you trying, I see you hustling. And like, you know, I am, it's like an extra level of support um, that I appreciate every time I'm on the receiving end of it. And sometimes I get in, you know, too busy in my own world and I forget to be supportive to the other females in the industry. But, you know, my heart is like, yes, keep working. Yes. Don't stop trying. And especially, I mean, as we age, like, let me just say that out loud, like who decided that when you become an old women, woman, you don't have good ideas anymore, you know, like just because you're not in front of front of the camera looking, you know, and you have all the wrinkles or whatever. There's so many songwriters who are older women who are just like brilliant. And I, I feel like that sort of part of the industry is just undervalued in a huge way. Um, And I'm not an old woman yet, but I'm going to be there one day. (laughs) So I just want to support everyone in the industry who's like, I don't know, who's feeling what I feel. Um, And you want to be valued for the work that you do, not for um, for other things, superficial things. And speaking of support, you as an artist, whenever you're not making music, what kind of music are you into? Hmm. Well, that's a good question. It changes depending on my mood. We will like, I mean, I have kids, so we'll listen to some really like exciting top 40 pop music. Um, I'm also a Christian, so I'll listen to like worship music and just, you know, sing my heart out to that a lot. Um, I grew up listening to like smooth jazz and doo-wop from my dad and, um, and like my mom was like the one listening to the Beatles and that kind of stuff. So, um, but I also, like I said before, like there's a lot of indie influences that are smaller artists that um, I love and they're all kind of in like this electro pop space. Um, yeah, it just depends. I I mean, I could give you a list, but I, I don't know how to put one ahead of the other. I've been listening to a lot of like Sylvan Esso and Fantagram, those, which are like dark pop indie pop things is baby shark on the list (laughs) no it is not allowed (laughs) but yeah we had that moment for sure 
uh, all jokes aside, uh, when you are making your goals, how do you formulate proceeding with your goals? Do you write it down or you just keep it in your head? How do you approach that? Oh, man, I wish I was more organized. Um, I feel like I was that person once upon a time before I had a bunch of kids (laughs) who would like, you know, plan out the goals. And I feel like, uh, now I'm just a little bit more intuitive and a little bit more, um, I guess reactive, not reactive in a bad way, but just you know, I'll respond to an opportunity and I will know, I'll just have that gut feeling of like, yes, I should jump into this, even though it's going to be busy. Like, yes, I should do, you know, like, I'm trying to finish an album for a a music library right now. And I don't know if the library is going to take it, but if they don't, uh, now we're going to have 10 songs that we just absolutely love. And so um, I felt like it can be a goal that I set up as like a, we want to, we want to pitch to this library. We want it to be wanted, but if it's not, it's still just good goal setting for us. And it's like keeping us to a deadline and that kind of thing. So, um, yeah. And then when I feel a little bit just too busy knowing when to be like, no, I cannot help you top line that. So I cannot help you write that song. I just have no capacity for it or whatever it is. So I don't know. It's kind of on a gut reaction kind of thing. I probably need to get more organized it, uh, on all that stuff. <laughs> and with the challenges face from last year and this year, and really, to be honest, I mean, every year there's some kind of new challenge. If you look at it, how do you keep yourself just clear on your target on what you will do and what you won't do as far as your priorities? How do you keep yourself locked in and committed to that? I, it's just a bunch of trial and error, really. Like, it's just me. The only reason I know I need to start saying no now is because. I said yes too many times and I learned that, wow, that was too much of a sacrifice for my family. That was, that was wearing all of us to, you know, out too much. And so it's just been trial and error. And that's the part of like just jumping in and trying something and just, um, you know, saying yes for a while until you realize you got to start saying no. And then maybe you say no for a while and you're like, okay, I can let some things in now. And so, I mean, maybe that's not how other people approach life, but I'm just, I'm that kind of person that's just sort of, um, what's the word low maintenance about, you know, just, uh, I don't know, not too worried and not too type a and not too planned out with things. Um, I don't know. I, I do have long-term plans. I think it's just like the, the details, the day to day, I'm just focused on it. I just keep working the next day on the next song I'm able to get done. And when like another deadline comes up, then I move over to that thing and I try to finish that quickly. And I don't know, that's probably a terrible answer, but it's all just sort of intuitive for me. (laughs) Sounds like living in the moment is a big thing for you. How do you keep yourself just inspired when it comes to just enjoying your life that you're trying to live? How you keep yourself motivated? You know, that going into like the last year, like I don't know, the year of saying yes to too many things, I was saying no to like exercise. And I was saying no to like, some of the restful practices in my life. And um, so those have been some recent changes, like I, you know, got back into my like exercise classes, and just having that like release that helps me a lot. That's sort of my, my physical release to get out all the whatever, right. And, um, and then yeah, having enough mental clarity and just peace and rest and not constantly stressing or constantly working, just having a little bit of rest. I'm constantly thinking of melodies, even if I'm like cooking dinner or something. So I'll sit down with my ukulele and I'll just, you know, it'll inevitably come out. Sometimes I have to make the creative juices happen for a deadline, but, and I can kind of get myself into that space. And other times it's like, it's what I want to be doing on a Sunday afternoon, just relaxing. It's like, well, let's write a new song, but I won't have a particular target in mind. I'll just write what comes out. Um, yeah. Again, I'm not knowing if I'm answering your questions. I'm just rambling at this point. <laughs> no, you're good. You're good. Talking to not know my hair. I mean, folks at radio, before we let you go, how can people stay in touch with you? And what would you like to share with the audience? if you have anything in the future coming up? 
Hmm. I do have future things coming up. I'm actually trying to figure out. Um, I have a lot of songs I want to share with people. And these are songs that I really, really love. And they come from like a personal place. Not every single one of them was like heartfelt and personal, but some are like, even if they're upbeat, like they just, uh, these are songs I love <laughs> and I've been working on for a long time. So um, like some of them I wrote two years ago and we finally reworked them and really finished them. So um, I'm kind of in the midst of figuring out, am I going to release an album? Am I going to stick to doing singles? I have a lot of songs to share. So I'm really, really excited about it. I think we're going to start getting, um, you know, I'm going to start figuring out a strategy with music videos and like what the art looks like for some of these sounds. Um, and it's different. It's not like upbeat pop. I have some moodier work and some sort of more somber, serious um, songs. I, I just I'm so excited about. So, yeah, I am on I'm on Instagram most, you know, I'm most active there. So it's no my N-O-M-A-E dot music um, on instagram and also the same on tiktok which is just me being silly most of the time um yeah and all my links are there we want to thank no mind being on irony focus radio here today thanks for taking time your busy schedule to talk to us thank you so much it was so nice talking to you